everybody, John Wagnon here with Dev Central, and in this video we're going to talk about microservices. What is a microservice? So microservices in general is an approach to architecture, software architecture, that builds a large complex application from multiple small components, right? And they all they all perform this single function. So it's like a micro, you know, it's a microservice. Um, it's also, the microservice uh, term is also a term for the component itself, right? So each microservice is a distinct unit um, that has its own code base, its own infrastructure and database. Uh, and then these different microservices work together, communicating uh, typically through an API uh, to respond to different events, right? So to draw out a bit of a... Uh, you know, as of an example, I'll use like maybe an e-commerce application that takes orders from customers, it verifies inventory, um, it ships out items, and so this application is going to consist of several components. Let's say that there's a, um, let's say that there's a mobile, you know, you have mobile users, and then you have browser-based users, you know, looking, you know, coming from their laptop or desktop, that kind of thing. So there's going to be this, uh, this storefront, um, you know, app portion of the application that implements the user interface. And then there's some other backend services like uh, credit checking or inventory checks or order shipping and th those kinds of things, right? So a bit of a, uh, a, bit of a, a diagram here to explain it all would be from the mobile app, let's say that mobile application traffic comes into an API gateway. So I'll just put API gateway. And then th there's, a, uh, there's a REST API. So I'll just put REST API here that interacts with the mobile traffic and brings that traffic into the API gateway. And then the API gateway is maybe connected to a variety of different services. So let's say you have you know, shipping, and I'll just write them out here. Shipping, and let's say you have inventory, um, and let's say you have uh, account services, right? Like this is where, you know, account services. Okay, um, and then each of these uh, services, so like the shipping service or the inventory service or the account service is connected to a backend database. So I'm just going to put DB, um, you know, underneath each of these. Um, which one of the things, by the way, on the databases with this microservices architecture is that you can use a specific database that is, you know, conformed to the service that you're trying to accomplish here. So, you know, not all databases perform the, you know, the exact same functions or are configured to do exactly, you know, the thing that you want to do. So you may, you may need a variety of different databases. So that's one nice thing about microservices. Okay. So this is like a shipping database, this is an inventory database, this is an account database, all that, right? So the shipping service is going to have a REST API as well, and so are the inventory and account services. So I'll just put REST API on all these, right? And then this is how they're all gonna talk to each other via these REST APIs, right? So they all have their specific APIs exposed. Um, and then, of course, they interact with the backend databases as well. So from the mobile traffic, again, you have a REST API exposed from this API gateway, and then the API gateway connects to each of these APIs, right, so that the, all the traffic can talk. Um, and then over here on the browser side, you have uh, maybe a, a web-based storefront. So I'll just put, you know, storefront here. And this is like, you know, the web. So this is a, a web-based interaction. So the browser traffic is going to come into this web-based storefront API or, or web-based storefront. And then the storefront is also going to connect via APIs to each of these as well. So I'll just, so there's a lot of different, um, you know, lines going on here, right? So the storefront connects to all these services on the back end via these APIs. Okay, so the whole point here is that each of, these, um, each of these features or services are broken up into their uh, smaller component parts. Whereas in, if you remember way back into our, you know, what is, a, what is a modern application discussion, we talked about more of the legacy type applications that are built in like a monolithic architecture, whereas uh, a monolithic architecture would basically take all of this and it would all be in one big application and maybe there would just be one database that all of this stuff, you know, flows into or, or connects to, right? Um, so 
the microservices is much more uh, granular. It's broken apart into its, each you know, individual component parts. Okay, so a few things about the microservices is that the, the code base for a microservice is very small because it focuses on doing one thing and doing that thing well, right? And the small size also means that an individual developer or a small team is really all it takes to create and maintain that code. So that's really nice, you know, from that, uh, you know, that small code base um, for that specific microservice, right? Uh, so it's also autonomous in that a microservice can be deployed and scaled as needed without consulting with the other teams that are in charge of their microservice, right? And so, like, if your inventory just explodes, right, then you can scale out this microservice without necessarily affecting all the account, you know, uh, microservice uh, portion of this application, right? Um, and then all of this is possible because the microservices work together through these well-defined APIs, right? Um, and so these APIs also don't expose the internal workings of the microservice. So that's a really cool feature of the API portion of this. So the goal of the microservices is to sufficiently um, break down or decompose the application in order to facilitate this agility, this, you know, this, this fast moving environment uh, for the development and the deployment of this application. And so it's good to decompose this, to break it down into its functional component parts, but don't go overboard. Just because you can create a thousand microservices doesn't necessarily mean you need to, right? So just create the number that you need to to get the job done. Uh, don't necessarily take it overboard just because you can, right? So, uh, so that's one of the pitfalls of, of some, some people just kind of go, go way far that way. Um, okay, so a couple of other things that I'll mention, you know, we, we talk about within the application itself, the microservices in this would be the shipping service or the inventory service or the account service. But I also wanted to mention, you'll hear the term services um, when you talk about applications in general, and there are what we call application services as well. So over here, I'll just put um, app services and these are uh, still the same, you know, the same word services as microservices, but these perform a, you know, a, a bit of a different function. So application services themselves are software solutions that improve the speed and the security and the operation of the application itself. So these would be things like uh, service discovery. So I'll just put service discovery here. I'll, I'll mention just a few of these. So service discovery, if you can imagine in a, in a microservices based architecture, you could have lots of these services deployed. And if we were to overlay this on say like a Kubernetes framework using Docker containers, for example, you know, you've got different pods that have containers in them and those containers may hold, you know, the shipping service, or you may have the shipping service spread across multiple containers and multiple pods, right? That, that are spread across multiple nodes, if you remember back to the Kubernetes thing. And so, you know, these, in a Kubernetes deployment, these pods are ephemeral, so they come and go all the time. So the question would be, all right, if I am, a, you know, orchestrating all this stuff, or if I'm a user coming in trying to gain access to the shipping information or whatever, the shipping service, um, then how, how does the application know, how does the orchestration know where exactly that shipping service lives in that moment? Uh, or resides, what pod is it on? What container is it deployed in, right? And so there's a thing called service discovery, and you can do this on the client side or the server side or both to discover where all of these services are within your environment. And so the service discovery would be an application service that is applied to the application itself, right? Another one, I'll just put LB, that's load balancing. Um, this is uh, load balancing application traffic you know, for these uh, microservices application, these, these types of applications tend to generate a large volume of not only north-south traffic, that's the traffic coming into the application, but also east-west traffic. So, you know, one service talking to another service. So this would be the east-west traffic. And so there needs to be an application service that takes care of the load balancing across the application itself, all right? So that's another application service to think about. Um, 
I would say uh, traffic routing. So I'll just put, you know, routing. Uh, so when you talk about north-south traffic coming in from the customer or from an outside machine or, you know, user, whatever, then, you know, you may have this application deployed across multiple clouds or, you know, whatever it is. And so you need to, you need to route the traffic uh, properly from out, from, tra from the, you know, from the user that's outside the cluster, in this case, maybe a Kubernetes cluster coming into Kubernetes um, to, to uh, you know, route the traffic properly inside the cluster, right? So you have traffic routing. Uh, another one I'll put is visibility, visibility, all right? So this is like the monitoring um, where you need to get, maintain visibility over less. You can, you can only imagine how complicated this could get very quickly when you're talking, especially if you're talking multi-cloud deployments, with you know thousands of different um, you know uh, uh, containers and a variety of pods and nodes and multiple Kubernetes clusters and just that whole thing, it can get very complex very quickly. So you need to maintain good visibility over that entire environment, that entire application environment, right? Um, and then also I'll put uh, security. So that's another application service. So things like you know security rules, whether it's RBAC, like role-based access control on you know, um, inter-service interactions, uh, or whether that's like a like a web application firewall or some kind of DDoS protection to you know protect your application um, from an attacker coming in trying to do bad things to your application within all this environment. So again, there's uh, there's microservices that are defined within the application itself, and those are the component parts that are you know that make up the fullness of the application itself. And so when you hear microservices, you can think about those individual service, you know, microservices within the application. But then there's application services that would be deployed or that would, that would reside over the entirety of the application. So you're, again, you're gonna hear services, application services, and you're gonna hear microservices. So it's important to know what both of those are. They're both extremely important to this whole discussion. And so hopefully uh, you've, you know, picked up a couple of things on services, microservices, and how they fit into modern applications. So, hey, thanks for watching this Lightboard lesson video with us today. If you like this thing, you can click up here on our DevCentral logo and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and we'll see you guys out there in the community.